Welcome to A Little Tom Foolery, Rob Little and Tommy Ryman. A podcast filled with laughs and gas, guffaws and haws, and maybe a picture of a dog. A little Tom Foolery, a little Tom Foolery, a little Tom Foolery. A little Tom Foolery, a little Tom Foolery, a little Tom Foolery. Fools! Good morning, good day, and good evening. Welcome to A Little Tom Foolery with your hosts. Rob Little and my good buddy Tommy Ryman. We are excited to be back after a little hiatus, but we just were gone a bunch, so we couldn't get together. But Tommy Ryman, how you doing, buddy? Good. I'm doing all right. I'm uh, staying busy, and uh, yeah, the summer well, what, summer's here. What do you got coming up? Uh, this coming week, I'll be in Duluth, Minnesota, and then uh, Superior, Minnesota. So I got. Uh, so fun, fun stuff. At the what are club. they, private gigs or something? No, the Duluth one is the uh, uh, is the uh, like a boat club comedy club. I did that earlier in the fall, and then the Superior is a private one. Yeah, yeah. Good for you, buddy. I uh, have the Birch Run Speedway in Birch Run, Michigan, this Saturday, and then next week I'm at the Comedy Cabana in Myrtle Beach all week. That's a long week. It's a Tuesday Whoa. through Sunday. Yeah. So, hey. yeah, buddy. What, uh, what, man, where we, where have you been? What's been going on? Talk to me. Well, just last weekend I was at St. in St. Paul. There's a, a comedy club camp bar. And it was 4th of July weekend. So I was a little nervous because you never know. That can be a real slow week for it because people are heading up to cabins, but they were surprised by the numbers. I had really good, a lot of people show up. And then there's some people that came from, they were in town from New Mexico and they had seen my dry bar. So they were so excited that they could catch the show. And I had a family and there was two little boys that came. So that was pretty cool that they, <laughs> they came to the show and they yeah. were like, we don't normally take the kids to bar. And I was like, yeah, this yeah. is the big day for them. Should- you shouldn't have this time either. <laughs> yeah. And Not then, that you have to worry about your act, but still, I mean, you yeah. know, you don't and want that it, pressure. Sorry. Go ahead. No, the non commentary but do you remember when I contested my speeding ticket? Yes. Uh, well, I had my fi- final uh, court thing okay. where I was actually going to go to the court and it was all zoom. I thought I was going to get to go into the court till, and I was going to have a suit on and everything, but they were like, they moved it to a zoom hearing. And it was so weird. And the judge was in there, like they put you in the room and they were, they were doing, they were finishing another court case. So a woman had like stolen from Walmart and I felt like I shouldn't be in there, but I guess (laughs) if you do court, like they just line everybody up and they get them going. So they're, so I would have been in the same room, but, and so that was kind of sad to see. And then I started feeling bad. I was like, why am I even contesting this? I'm not (laughs) wait. I felt like I was wasting everybody's time. No. And then the, uh, the, uh, prosecutor goes can i talk to tommy in a separate room and so he brings me in and he goes did my guy offer you a deal and i go yeah i think he did i didn't really understand it so i just kept contesting it and then he had submitted some stuff into evidence and he goes okay well just to let you know what's going on he goes on the evidence it says that the cops saw you go like 78 79 80 and then it dropped, you know, that said person hit brakes and he goes, so actually, if we, if you go move forward this to court, he goes, I'm going to try to get it changed to the 80 because he only got you a ticket for 79 or, you know, so 19. So over. he's trying to be a jerk to make you. Yeah, bleed he, tried, out. he scared me. And then he goes, but we can drop it down to 11. And he, and the officer was there because that's what a lot of people said. They go, if you get, go for a traffic violation, if the officer shows up, you're pretty much you're done because it's their word against yours. And sure. And then he submitted the radar stuff. And and then I, I was just, so I just had questions. I go, so then what happened? He goes, well, he goes, the, the officer Todd, he's been doing this for 20 years. Traffic violations is his main thing. Like he was given. And then, and then I did read his report. That was like, it was a sunny, dry day. The, I was in the middle lane. So it wasn't even like I was passing somebody, but there was no video of it. And then I was like, I just took the plea. I panic because he goes, because he goes, if we go with the higher one, that that ticket could be like 220 bucks. And he goes, but if we if he goes, if you take this and I'll lower it down to 11 over, then it's 
that what we you know it was like 110 bucks or something so i was like i'm going with that deal deal or no deal <laughs> <laughs> so so i didn't get to actually do the court thing but i but and then that other woman so what do you do bring you into a separate zoom room yeah you go, go into a breakout room <laughs> Okay. And then you go back into the court and then he goes, okay, Tommy's playing. And then they asked if I, then they gave me 90 more days to pay it or whatever. So, right. but, but the woman that I had watched, what she, sorry, I'm talking so long. No, it's cool. <laughs> this is interesting. But, but the, she had stolen from Walmart. I couldn't figure it out. And then she took a plea and they were just going to make her pay it back. So I was like, did she give the stuff back? Why would she have to pay? So she, so I didn't quite understand, but she had to pay like 148 bucks, but it felt so bad for her. Cause she was like on her phone. Like when I zoomed, I had like my mic, like I looked all right. And then she's just on her phone and you could hear like a baby crying in the background. And I was, you just felt bad. Cause you're like this woman, no, you know, Tommy. it's the middle of the day. I almost wanted to be like, put her tab on my, I knew I was, you were going to say that. I just wanted to be in the court. I just watched more of them. Be like, I'll take that one too. You know, once once it got up to like fifteen hundred bucks, then I'd be like, okay, I got I got back up. I'm I can't afford this. But. Oh my god! Yeah, no, those people. Just because she didn't have a mic and headphones doesn't mean she didn't. No, I meant more like she was like her baby was crying in the background. Yeah, Not, I just meant that she was clearly the people that steal or some obviously they're on some hard times hopefully or they're kleptomaniacs or, or something, i was just gonna but. say or they <laughs> enjoy the art of stealing, getting away with it yeah that might not even been her baby she's like put a crime baby back here to make right. me look good <laughs> right could have been an app crime baby app <laughs> but yeah so that was i was wow. up to i was, I was <laughs> fighting the government wow. and you were just in milwaukee dude it was I never heard, just like you, you said they they expect it to be a rough week. And I don't get a lot of improv bookings that, like I used to. And so this was a big one for me. And so I, when I went in, it was cool because I brought the feature and the MC, And it was both their first times playing improvs. So they oh, were cool. super excited, you know. And uh, the manager said we had, this is the first week they had ever booked a comedian that was actually most requested by their guests. Yeah, because people have been begging you to come back to Milwaukee because right? both clubs were gone, right? The cafe. Oh, three clubs. Gone. Yeah, wow. Cafe, Giggles, in Germantown, and Jokers in the Silk Strip Club. Yeah. So yeah. I know. So, and what was even cooler was the all the owners came out from all those clubs. And oh, so, and nice. so did Samara. Oh, no way. Who's oh, the booker? I wish I had been with you. Uh, I know they all asked about you, too. They all said, how's Tommy? I goes, well, funny you should ask. And I give them the card with our podcast on it. <laughs> nice. So um, a bunch of people were talking about the podcast that they were going to start listening. Um, and then uh, uh, what happened? Oh, my God. I did. Uh, the weeks were it was amazing. Like they said, they. We're not expecting anybody in every show. The whole first section was filled up, which I don't know if you, have you seen the Milwaukee improv yet? No, it's, but I'm at they're big, aren't they? If it's like, oh, a, my God, it is like you've been to the funny bone, like the Columbus funny bone. Mm -hmm, yeah, it's probably double the size. Wow. It's That's humongous. like a small theater. Wow. It is like it's, a, it's like a big theater. Is what yeah, it is. yeah. I think they could probably hold five to six hundred. Wow. Yeah. And wow. we were at least 200 every show. So they were like ecstatic. This, yeah, they were so, and which was awesome for us, you know. And, um, but I did a buttload of antiquing this past weekend. Nice. Cool. I found a ton of, like, one store I walked in, there's three fish and nutcrackers staring right at me as soon as I walked in <laughs> and I didn't have them. Oh, so nice. Like, oh, my God. This is amazing. And so, um, what else did I find? I found some more of those fish bottles. I found pretty much everything I collected except ice cream uh, lighted signs. Right on. That's that great. Was, oh, my God. It was so fun. What a fun And everything thing. was, like, amazingly priced, too. I was not expecting. Anyways, it was fun. And I took different people with me every day. And we, it was, uh, they were all like, we can't believe how much you know about these things, you know? Oh, fun. Because I was collecting Pyrex, too, when I was with the X. And. 
So I knew like numbers for each bowls and everything. They're like, how do you know all this? I'm like, <laughs> I do a lot of research. Yeah, that's awesome. But yeah. So anyways, and then, you know, I sent you a couple of those. I, every time I see Superman crap, I'm like, well, I don't know if Tommy likes this, if this would be, because that right. one that I sent you looked like a Lego too. And I thought, oh, ooh, this is different. Yeah. But, that doesn't mean that that's what you'd be into. It'd be like somebody sending me a nutcracker, but it wasn't a fishing one. I'm like, it's not really what I'm into. But um, anyways, so I was there and then I did a couple of loony. Oh, I, was, I did a couple of loony bins, which we could talk. We're going to we're going to get more in depth into this stuff next week. Yeah, um, but they were fun, too. They were super fun. And I got to meet the new owners, new owner of one of them. And anyways, it was it's been a crazy week, but we got. Uh, whole cast we've been waiting to release yeah this is i mean we're just doing the introduction for the part two of paul hooper yeah so. it's so funny he's he's literally one of my favorites now on the road if he if you ever get a chance to see him or work with him he is amazing yeah he's a great guy should we just yeah say, we'll just here, go right into it buddy. here's part two you talk about something in your act that i was just like oh that's exactly how i feel too because we are both men of the end of our bloodline yes and i feel the same way that you do i'm like i'm stopping it because there's no good we're all horrible in our <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> like my dad was a jerk my grandpa was a jerk like they're all i don't know past him but i'm sure they were all jerks so i'm like we finally to me we finally got a good one and so i'm done we're done <laughs> Yeah, I did that joke for a long time. It's like, I am an only child, but then I have two sisters, two half-sisters from my dad's second marriage. So I do this only child bit forever. And I can in the bloodline because I'm the last boy. Right. But they came out and saw me after years and they were like, we get a bone to pick. You're not an only child. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, technically. <laughs> Plus, technically, yeah. it's comedy. So shut up, family. We don't need... <laughs> I would like to say I'm an only child too, but I have a sister. So, uh, but that, I, I just love that bit because I, when you, do you, have you ever been with a girl where you're like, maybe we will have kids? Uh, there were a couple. I'm surprised I didn't because I was so reckless in my twenties. And then <laughs> uh, I, I don't know, with a couple girlfriends, I was always very careful because of comedy. I was just like, this makes no sense mathematically. We cannot have a kid right now. I remember right. having a girl time that I loved. We lived together, we together a year or two. And she, I remember she's like, Mr. Birth Control. And she's, we had this conversation before, you know, before we did something. And she's like, would it be the worst thing if we had a kid? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> and I started a fight in the bedroom. And, oh. uh, <laughs> then I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said it that way, but yeah, it would be a bad idea. <laughs> and it's great that we didn't have a kid, but there were a few times, I guess. I feel, I'm grateful I didn't. I just yeah, never, you're like, I don't want this child watching me on stage up there getting slapped by audience members <laughs> just over and over and over. It's not a good role model. We're gonna, we're gonna have some serious issues watching dad get hit in the face over with blocks of wood. Just kidding. It's crazy. I don't know. I see comics that had kids like you're on the road all the time. And the money's crazy and unstable. I, I just I don't know how you how they do it. So because you know later in life they're gonna have that talk where they're like i'm sorry i wasn't there for you but i was trying to make money for the family <laughs> you know no. yeah no they're, i don't know i feel like chad daniels is a, a good example of a thought like because he would take his summers or slower so he'd be around more but it's definitely like i don't know it seems like it'd be hard to have a child and do what we do yeah, he's the exception. I've seen people pull it off. You know, Tom Simmons is great. Tom's got a son that he loves and like is getting yeah. ready to go to college or graduate high school. And they did those, they were good parents and pulled it off. But I know and it's I, like, yeah. The other people that make it work, it's like, well, Jim Gaffigan's got kids. Like, well, he's a millionaire. Once you can get yeah. a nanny or like a, somebody that somebody pays somebody to watch yeah. the kid. And you got a wife that writes for you and with you. Yeah, he you got a really good deal. I, I don't. But. Yeah, he's definitely go. He definitely made a deal with the devil because there's no way. Like I'm sure he's a good, he's a great writer, but on his own. But I, his wife helps him with that. Most of it is what I under. Is that what you know about him too, Paul? Or no? I don't know. I met them 
uh, one time, but I didn't know she wrote stuff. Well, she used to be a comic. I vaguely remember hearing that. I just, yeah. I didn't, I wouldn't remember if you hadn't said it right now, but it was super nice. And I met her. I did that Red Eye show. Do you remember Red Eye? Yeah. <laughs> I did that and he was on it on the same one. And oh, so really? we were in the green room for like 10 minutes for a minute. Yeah. And all I remember <laughs> Gavin doing, which was funny in the green room, is he kept talking about, he's like, Byron Allen's a billionaire. You know Byron Allen? Um, he was just baffled by how much money Byron Allen had. <laughs> well, he's like produces so many shows too. That's yeah, he probably. bought the Weather Channel. Yeah. He's like, he's a billionaire. And then, but he kept making fun of Comics Unleashed. So it was like Jim Gaffigan doing Comics Unleashed questions going around the room. I heard you get a divorce, that type of thing. Right. And he, uh, jokes, and it was actually funny. I was actually like, oh, he's a billionaire, but I'm like, you have money too. Yeah, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you ever do Byron Allen show? No, never. Oh, I did it once. Um, it was very awkward. He'd be like, so your grandma's not nice? And I'd be like, yeah. And then he'd go to the next person. So I heard you in a lot of debt. It was just like zero segment. Yeah, I mean, go right into your bit. Yep. Yeah, Gosh. jar. Yeah. Cold starts, yeah. He might as well just looked at you and said, go, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, that was the first place I met rich little. And I was, he was on one of the shows and I was so excited to meet him. Cause obviously my whole career, everybody's like, are you related to rich little and all this stuff? And he was not nearly as excited to meet me as I know. <laughs> like <laughs> I really, I really thought we were going to have a kinship, but he did not care what. So he like, your last nice name guy. is little too. <laughs> oh, we have to be friends forever. <laughs> right. Rich. I, I was hoping. The impressionist, right? Right. Right. Do you have, still. Yeah. Do you ever work the Tropicana in Vegas? No. Okay. No, he's, never. He's the early show, and then you would work the two late, the two shows after him. Oh, he has and, the residency there? Yeah. Nice. And, and so I I got to meet him. I've talked to him a few times there. He's just not a happy guy. And his, he's 85 or something now. But, um, and he's still working, which is pretty sweet. I mean, but uh, it, every joke is like, um, so do you remember Catherine Hepburn? And she would do like, Oh, he starts doing her impression and stuff. He basically does all of Gone with the Wind, his whole act. <laughs> wow. You know what? The story, I worked Vegas years ago, like a really awful room downtown at the Plaza. Yeah. The Plaza. Oh, it was terrible. Was but that Barnhart's room? Or way before the Comedy Zone had a room out there and oh. they had two different rooms, two or three, all awful. All of them terrible. But I go to Vegas for a couple of weeks and got paid, but I remember out at the plaza that was like old school Vegas on Fremont. There was on Sunday, they had a celebrity brunch show. It was Larry Manetti and friends. Do you know who the fuck Larry Manetti is? <laughs> I did a show out there like that too, but it wasn't Larry. It was Don something. Don, yeah. Very Vegas y name. Yeah. And Larry Manetti's like the guy from Magnum PI. <laughs> the old guy or the no. black guy? Not him. The other helicopter guy. Oh, I don't know. I don't know the like fourth. He was like the last guy you would remember. He was on a lot of episodes, so you have to look it up because I don't really know what his name was or what his role was on the show. But he was on Magnum PI. But he was the lowest rung of the cast member. It was Larry Minetti brunch, and I think Rich Little would do it. They'd have like the guests that week. I never went and saw it, but sometimes they'd get the comics to go do spots, and some of the comics are like, "Oh, I'm at Rich Little." And they're just doing this brunch show with this guy from Magnum P.I. So, <laughs> I'm 10th lead on Magnum P.I. <laughs> that sounds amazing. <laughs> wow. Did so you, weird. who was your, uh, now I, I was instantly, when you said that, it reminded me of some of the people I met when I lived in LA. Did you meet any um, big names like TV, like TV big names when you lived in New York? Cause you didn't live in LA ever, did you? No, I just made trips to LA. But okay. I mean, all these people, like, I don't know if I met them. I mean, I would see people come and go, like, at the cellar, you know, there's nights I didn't meet them, but right. sitting in the street, just hanging out. Cause I never did the cellar, but we'd go by there. And there was one Tuesday night 
Attell was always there, but then Chris Rock and Chappelle yep. came. Said hello. That's... You just watch on a Tuesday night, watch them say hello to each other, then just slowly go downstairs, and then they lock the room down. And That's like, so Man. funny. You brought you brought up the three guys I had to follow at the cellar when I was there. I had to follow Chappelle one night. I had to, I always followed Attell. It seemed like, and then I followed uh, Chris Rock one night too. And they were the only one I did well after was Chappelle. And I thought that was the one I was going to eat the most crap after, but um, he was just so hammered up there and just smoking the whole time. And we're all like, you're not supposed to smoke in here. Are you <laughs> They're like in Chappelle? You go tell him. I'm like, oh, no, I'm, I'm okay with it. <laughs> Diplomatic immunity, you know, it does yeah. whatever. And yeah, I didn't see him. they locked the room down. So they wouldn't let anyone from the restaurant even use the bathroom. They're like, no one's, can go in but you could see it on the tvs and you know one of them went up the other one went up then they were both up with other comics on stage riffing so i'd see that or see seinfeld go down like the steps of the cellar but then i remember when i moved there you know because it was 2011 2012 like michael che was running a bar show in brooklyn so i met him pretty early and people were talking about michael che but and then quickly he got all that it started to go I guess it was already going well. It already started happening, but you know, then he just ascended. But yeah, that, and he was very cool to me. And I'd see him do shows in front of eight people, and now he's a bona fide celebrity, like famous right. person. You know? So, but I don't know about like celebrities on a regular basis. It's just New York is just like it never. I moved from Charlotte, which is was a terrible scene, to the biggest scene in the world. I right. never had. A, Minneapolis with Tommy and those guys were always nice to me. That was as close as I got to ever having a comedy scene. You yeah, because you were pretty respected by all the Minneapolis comics and regularly there and knew most of us. It made me feel great because then I could like, well, I knew most of you and like you could get a handle and like these are the really good comics in Minneapolis and you sort of go, here are the clubs. In New York, you can never get like, it never stopped. There was always a new wave of comics coming. So it was too big to understand. Charlotte was terrible. And so Minneapolis was the one like, oh, I'm like, oh, I would love to be a part of a scene like this. I felt like I was when I visited. So that's what I loved. New York was too much for me. And like, you were in never... Michigan a lot though, too, weren't you? For Yoder and them? Yeah. Yeah. I did a lot of stuff in Michigan, especially like 10 years ago and stuff. All those yeah, random that... ones. Yeah. Right. That's where I always seemed to see you. That's why I was, when you brought up Sioux Falls, I was like, I could have swore we're Michigan, Ohio, but yeah. Um, and I love the Midwest because I feel like I started in the Southeast. I feel like Midwest, the crowds are more fun and they don't get as offended as easily. So when I got into stuff in the Midwest, I felt like I enjoy the shows more than doing Alabama and like, you know, Mississippi and stuff like that. Really small bar gigs. So when the bar gigs in Michigan and Ohio are a lot more fun, I thought. Yeah, I agree. You know? When you get, it's, I did a, a bar gig in Louisiana. When the Remember when the Funny Bone used to be in Shreveport? Oh yeah, man. They used to book a one night or they, they would heckle you and they were so swamp people that you couldn't understand what they were saying. At least when you got heckled in the Midwest, you were like, okay, I know where this idiot's coming from. He's about to smack me. So I better come back with something. But down there, they'd be like, here, home, we're here, home. And you're like, I, I, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> like, it was so bad. Dude, yeah. did you do a lot of those too? I did a hand thing to Louisiana some really like Chalmette, uh, which was right outside of New Orleans, Slidell, and something, a college town in Louisiana. And then I did Shreveport, the Funny Bone there. I, the Shreveport Funny Bone, I remember doing, I can't remember what year this was. I was sober, and Dave Waite featured for me. You know Dave? Oh, nice. yes. Dave's the best. Uh, and we were miserable because it was June of whatever year. And we were in the comedy condo and it was a hundred and something degrees with all the humidity. And I mean, oh. we we're just average apartment. It wasn't the worst, but it wasn't the best condo. And then it was the, this will tell you the time of it. Somehow it went from analog to digital on the cable or they made a transition and we lost all the cable and internet for the rest of the week. So we had nothing. Oh, I remember when that was going to happen where they're like, your TVs need to change to this. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the week, so we had nothing but to sit around and smoke cigarettes in 103 heat. And the what? shows were weird down there. They would get like 20 people, 27, 32 people. We never had a packed show. And we had to go Tuesday through Sunday. So every... Oh, that's brutal. 
Okay. But if I, I was like, going to have go to sm- sit in 100 degree heat and smoke cigarettes, I would like to do it with Dave Waite. I feel like he would be a good, like he would be just as miserable in a fun way. Yeah, we bonded that week. We ate yeah. Popeye's and just complained the whole week. Paul, we have we have little segments. We we uh we play a game on here. I don't know if you want. Uh, you don't see like I mean, you might like play a game. But do you like trivia? Do you ever do trivia? I love trivia, but Look, I'm terrible. See, we, I like to try to stump Rob because Rob is super smart. I, as you know, like he's already like I googled this thing. I, I know all this stuff. So <laughs> so I always pick a topic and I try. I ask five questions and we see if I can stump Rob. But now, since you're a guest on, I'll do it for both of you. So he has double the chance of, of not losing. And he, I think he's only lost like once because uh, he yells at me if he loses. So I try to make <laughs> it possible. But uh, on a little segment of Let's Stump Rob. Stump Rob and Paul Hooper. The, uh, I've got trivia about cats because you have a cat. So oh, like, yay. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna ask some questions. You two chime in and see if you can uh, if you get any of these right. Play along at home <laughs> if you want. Uh, you guys ready? Yeah. Here we go. What is the proper term for a group of kittens? Is it uh, a caboodle, a kind, a kindle, or a kettle? Wow, I totally don't know this one. I'd never even heard of it. Caboodle? Any guesses? Caboodle sounds fun, right? I'm going to say, what were the other three? Uh, A caboodle, a kine, a kindle, or a kettle? I'm going to say a kine. Kine? All right. You're both wrong. It's kindle. (laughs) says the proper term for a group of kittens is a kindle. Uh, Kindle, litter, or intrigue. (laughs) Wow. All right. That's all right. You still got four more. All cats are born with what color eye? Pink, green, blue, or black? Well, the comic in me wants to say pink eye. But... <laughs> Gross. <laughs> black. Uh, you were saying black. So I'm... when they're when they're first born, and then they change later. What what color yeah. do you think, Rob? I'm gonna go with black. Also, going with black, and you're wrong again. Blue. <laughs> oh, All cats what? are born with blue. Eye. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen like super young, uh, like. Yeah, and they look like they, they're they hazed over. Blue. Yeah. Uh, shit. Yeah, that's okay. If you you can still get three more right. Uh, here's one about their tails. What percentage of cat's bones are in its tail? Is it twenty percent, two percent, ten percent, or is it there are no bones in a cat's tail? Ooh, I'm gonna go with no bones. It's cartilage, I think. I was going to say the same thing, but it's got to throw us off. It's got to be a trick. So I'll pick just now. Was it 20%? There's 20, 10, 20, 10% or 2%. I don't think that's 20% doesn't make sense, but I'm going to say it just because it seems like a trick. Oh, man. You guys are both wrong. It's 10% of a cat's bones. Are, are you the tail. serious? These Come bones on. are called caudal vertebrae. Oh, like, my God. Yeah. This, this is, is way hard. harder than I thought. I know. Pearl, okay, here's to... a fun one. Yeah, go what grab is it Pearl. <laughs> what is it called when a cat needs the ground? Is it kneading, snurgling, sn- sneagling, or rubbing? <laughs> Jeez. When it's like doing that little d d d d d. I think that's called kneading, isn't it? That's kneading. my. Is that what you guys are going with? Yeah. Yeah. It's called snurgling. That's the... <laughs> Of Which, course, the one you couldn't say right off the bat. It feels like they've gone out of the way to not call it what it is, which is just kneading, because that's when they're always making biscuits. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, oh, my cat's over there making biscuits. Well, I think I stumped you. By uh, far. One, here's one final one. How many how many different sounds can a cat make? Oh, my is God. By the way. 10, 27, 150, or 100? I feel like this is one cat owner that made these answers up. Yeah, this sounds like a crazy person. Like his, my, he's like my cat's name is Biscuit, and he does all these things. He snurgles, and he. Yeah, this was the toughest stump rob. Cats make have. a lot of noises. So, what were the things again? How many sounds can a cat make? Uh, 10, 27, 150, or a hundred? Man, I'm gonna go with a hundred and fifty. Okay, Paul. One hundred. 
One hundred. Paul is correct. Oh, you got one. Sounds and a dog can only make ten sounds. Wow. So we stumped Rob, didn't stump Paul. Paul, I got every mastered. single one wrong. You I did. didn't get one right. This has never happened. <laughs> never this happened. Horrifying. Wow. But Good one, Rob, Tommy. Ed, Rob edits the podcast, so it'll just be him over. I'll win. Oh, 100. And then it'll, it'll, <laughs> it'll be all off. <laughs> be like, oh, my God. Oh, it's unbelievable. Five I, better, five. I better do my cheer. Yay. <laughs> got them all right. <laughs> nice job. Uh, sorry to bore you there, Paul. I felt like the same thing. I was going to do one of my segments and I was like, Paul be so bored by this. I, I think it. it's fun. It was terrible, but I was just trying to get it in there. So like I looked it up and I was like, well, yeah, I'm, that was good. I'm going to force this annoying cat trivia on these people. Can good your trivia. cat, I'm can fast. your cat even do that, Tommy? Cause you only got, it's only got one. Th- it's got three legs. Yeah, but he can do it with his front. He can, when he's laying down, he's like, burp, burp, burp. Oh, and then he, okay. he doesn't need his back leg. I'm fascinated by my cat. This is boring to everyone, but a cat <laughs> covers her food. I would like Google that a long time ago because she would always take a towel and cover her dishes. And I'm like, oh, and it's like their, I guess their original instincts, they cover their food so predators don't know where they live. They can't, it's not so someone doesn't steal their food, it's so that they can't smell where they're at. They're wow. laying. And so they're safe. So they, she just, still does that to this day and wow. pulls up the upper dishes and i'm like oh that's fascinating that's and boring you jump out and you're like i found you again <laughs> she's like ah we had a cat that would hide its food in the like rug in the kitchen like that same and thing then yeah we're always like why the hell does it keep we keep finding cat food in this rug but it was this yeah we didn't know okay so we didn't know that i'm gonna have to yeah instincts are still intact so they think i don't know just protect it from predators they don't want to be you know discovered yeah. so it makes sense but it's weird for anyway that yeah, stuff. Pearl doesn't sound very regal now no <laughs> thanks again for tuning in to all cats cats podcast all <laughs> cats all the time with paul rob and tommy we love cats but so, paul, paul i was gonna ask you this is oh unless rob, no but, go ahead so you and i are both on the same record label stand up records because another time i hung out with you most was at the akamal our record label did a comedy festival in mexico so i just i don't know i've never heard the story of how you met dan or how you ended up on the label in the first place oh yeah so i did a joke joint the one that used to be by the mall of america in maybe 08 or 09 sometime and um john conroy featured that's the first time i met john conroy and then um I somehow I did a couple shows and then someone invited Dan for the Sunday night. Maybe all the comics used to go up. There'd be a Sunday night where everybody could go up. Huh? Okay. And I think Dan came to that and maybe someone put in a good word or you need to go told him to come out. It was something like that. Someone made the introduction. It might've been John or someone like that. And uh, um, I met him that week and then we talked and he offered me a deal. I don't know if it was that week or the next time I came. I think he saw a show or two, but that was it. So it was probably 09 at that Ramada Inn. Wow. Club. So the OG. And how did you know Ken and Becky from Florida? Yeah. Or I heard a comic that I don't even know if he does it anymore. A guy named Tim Polnick. Oh, okay. I think and I he, recognize that. He did it. And I like hit him up and it took like a year or two. And then before Ken would answer an email, and then he finally haggling with him and he gave me a summer week for, you know, no Thousand. money probably 80 million dollars god yeah. he always overpaid it was summer week and uh and then did it in front of small crowds but he liked me and then that was when i got started and then sort of like then he opened a new club and all that stuff and he always booked me like twice a year so he's good to me over the years but it was yeah, just ken, one of- and, ken and becky loved you they were they were sweet and then they they had a comedy empire and then it slowly just went away they <laughs> So good to me, so nice. They kept me twice a year. Then they opened Houston. They bring me down there all the time. He gave me fallouts. I mean, they kept me going. So you know, I loved them. And uh, yeah, I did that Houston room too. And that one was it was hard to find. There was no signage, and it was like, and then there was like two different comedy clubs inside of it. Did you, you did the big one, one didn't you? Because I, oh. I never did the the final one. So you did you did the one where they like removed because me. Oh, wow. Yeah, you must have. Because yeah, I did were, the, the original laugh, whatever it used to be, some Houston room that they bought. Oh, I did. 
but the big room was there at the end the last year probably and i did that right before it closed i i was there right two weeks before it opened so i was i never got a chance to do the the one that they had all the big plans for yeah i mean it looked good and stuff it was just yeah and there was, it was so weird though how they would have the two rooms going at the same time and then like how did no. customers know which one to pick you know? Yeah, they were competing with themselves because they thought one would be an all door deal. You know, you'd have the bigger names that are taking 90% of the door. They're just selling drinks. Then they'd have my level or our level of where they're just going to pay a lump sum. But yeah, you're trying to sell triple the tickets and it's, it was confusing. Yeah. And I think that's why, but then, and they had a kitchen though, which that, that could have been the best thing if they had a, cause they had a decent restaurant. That's what, that's when clubs can make good money but it was just i don't think they had enough time to let it go yeah yeah pretty much because it was huge it was huge it was like an old fox and the hound restaurant and then um i was hoping for the best but man yeah and that's when you always find out like a club owner was legit i'm like oh they weren't laundering money then because they closed so they yeah. were just, this was all on the up and up Bummer. yeah <laughs> so. they're good people man i miss them yeah, they're so sweet. What but, are you working on now, Paul? Do you have anything in the works? I'm just trying to stay on the road. I mean, uh, I did record. Uh, mm-hmm. Tommy, if it's Dan at Stand Up Records recorded me, I didn't even know that was going to happen. So he's like, we should record the Saturday. This is on Friday. I'm like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's our best chance. So we recorded that, and he just sent me that recording. I've yet to watch it, but maybe I'll chop that up. And, or just put it out yeah why not yeah it was a great show your hour is really strong of thanks your man. latest one it's like one of those things i'd like to have more shows i don't know i'm always like that I overanalyze everything you're like okay, well, well are. <laughs> overall both of those shows were like really fun so if there's blemishes or things that are a little messed up in it then they just let it go out there but you know i'm always like i get super ocd and you're like there's never going to be a perfect show let it go and i have to talk myself into that because i'll nitpick it and be like there's 25 things i did wrong i don't like that and then like i'm never going to have anything if i do that you know so but i like that was a great that's like the perfect size venue and it's like so i'll probably i'll watch that and at least i don't know you put out as a special or clips or something that and then just basically road stuff i'm just since the pandemic i'm just trying to stay on the road me too as much as just take it all and just make up for the money i lost so what uh i do a lot of cruise ships too do you have you ever done cruise ships i just started so this year has been mostly that i never would have thought i talked to you in tampa about that because i was like how is it and you were giving me sort of like info on it because i was like i don't know man and then Starting in January, I got offered a bunch. I got referred to this agent who got me a bunch of them, and they've actually been really fun. It's been an adjustment. It's a lot, like trying to get five different 30-minute sets, two clean, three adult, and like switching stuff up and like closing on different stuff. Yeah, I feel yeah. like. So you're doing saying, carnival. <laughs> yeah, doing carnival. Yeah. yeah. So I've done, I also did celebrity, a couple of those, but it's been mostly like um, carnival stuff. So I go out sunday on another one for a week then have a couple in july a couple in august and you know it's helped and still have clubs in between is it two comics that are out in the boat or do you have a host they run them kind of like normal comedy clubs though yeah right when you're doing the show that's why the the cruise ships don't have such a stigma anymore because so many legit comics are just doing them like they're and there's they're getting good comedy yeah it's good it's like you know, there's two. So on the last ship I was on last week was four, eight day crews, four comics. So 20 shows total. Two you on the say, first, two on the last. It was a host, but sometimes they're like someone that works for Carnival. Sometimes they'll do jokes. I mean, not they're on, they're not a comic, but they host and then they bring you up, do a couple minutes and you just do 30. Good night. Nice. And then maybe an hour later they have another comic do was 30 and um, they just spread out the shows. You have a clean show and it could be 6.30 at night. It could be 11.30 at night. That's it. But they also told you you could do two adult, one clean, and repeat a couple of them. But I realized the crowd just comes back. So they didn't want yep. to see a repeat. Do you that's need to really so have true. And that's the tough, like, it's a, Tom Simmons told me, he's like, it's going to be a writing exercise. Take it as that. 
I'm like, yeah, it's serious. That's two and a half hours of stuff. Yeah, material that each has should have a closer on each one. Like yep. yeah. yeah, you're doing all your it, it's work, but it's been good. It's been like some fights taught me. Like now, when I go back to a club, I think I was a little too rigid to go. This is the set I want to do. The stuff I'm going to mess with is going to be in the middle. But now I'm like, I went to some club a few weeks ago and I'm like opened on something on a whim, something differently. Just didn't even think of a change the closer a minute before. I'm like, now nah, wow. I'll do this, mix up stuff in the middle, try something new. I don't know. It's loosened me up. I think it's helped. Yeah. You definitely brought up something that I really worked on too was uh, different closers for the shows. Cause uh, I work, I used to work a lot of carnival. I do more Norwegian and Royal now. And Norwegian, Sometimes we do seven shows wow. and excuse me. And I did seven different shows on this last cruise I was on, but the closers, it's like, oh, I only got like four that I could use for close. So like, you're trying to make something else be a closer and you're just like, oh, it's not quite it. <laughs> I guess yeah. I'm going to do one of those where I'm just like, hey, you guys have been great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm done. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, but that that's a big thing that a lot of the new guys don't think of when they're just like, okay, I'm just trying to get my family show down. I'm like, you only got one. And they're like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, you're going to upset some of the crowd because they'll come back and they'll immediately tell other people, oh, he just repeats. Yeah. You know, but if you're doing it, if you say it, I say right at the beginning of the week, I, every show is different. So come back, you know, and then they do, they just keep coming back and back. And that's what you want to portray, even if you are going to repeat, because I know some guys do this too. They'll, they are going to repeat. They'll still say they're doing different stuff just to make the crowds keep coming back. Get out and then you push the repeat stuff further into your set. Open on the, and then they're 20 minutes in, they'll let you. All right. We've heard that. They're like, we want to hear that one again. Yeah. That you told it like little greatest hits from yesterday. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Or you do the little, uh, so yeah, somebody asked these. Some people said they wanted to hear this again for their friends. So I'm gonna do it. You know. Yeah, the truth. Yeah. yeah. So where where can people find you? You've got your website. You're on Instagram. That's it. PaulHooperComedy.com website. Paul E Hooper on Instagram. My Instagram's super annoying, so I understand if you mute mute me or. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. No man, it's just it's just pictures of cat and rock hard body. From all your exercise that's oh, great great content i scaled down the thirst traps although i'm going to the bahamas hey. so that'll be did you say you scaled down the thirst traps yeah he was selling too many tickets that's like he's like yikes i gotta ease up dark. it's that not the kind funny. of people i want at my shows mm-hmm. uh, yeah. who does your website for you that's it. I just had a buddy to it. It's like Squarespace. So it's super basic. Some comic uh, friend did like the layout. I need to sort of redo it. I yeah. Like- <laughs> I was going to say, you like, you, you don't have many of your show dates on there. No, that stuff. I used to be better about updating it, but then it's almost like I started doing the ships and stuff. So I, I need to update that. I know. But you it's should one- put the ships on there because you'll be surprised. Like, I know you're getting fans on there. So they got to be, people will book a cruise if they see you're on it. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. I've heard that happens. I'm so it new does. With them. I don't know how it works, but yeah. Because there's right. people that do them all the time and they're and they look for the entertainment on there, especially carnival. There's because people get so many. Um, once they start doing carnival, they get all these points, they get free f- cruises all the time. So they'll just look and they'll be like, Oh my god, Paul's on this one again. Let's book that one, you know. So you should totally yeah. be putting those on too. I'm just trying to help you <laughs> I, well, I put some stuff out there because there's i am a booked on a ton of those coming up to the through the end of the year now and then i do have like some i picked up some more club dates so yeah that's one thing i used to stay on top of the road schedule and it got away from me this year so yeah point taken you're right I'll and up. you you said something else and you you almost said it with pride which i really appreciate is what when you said you know i go what do you got coming up and you're like i'm just i'm just on the road man i'm just trying you know and i and that's how i am too uh, um, I feel like Tommy's like Tommy's son, kind of like that. Tommy tries to shoot for TV though, and uh, he gets it every now and then, which is cool. Um, but b- before, like when you lived in New York, guys would look at a road guys like, oh, you're just doing the road, like you're just somebody that isn't. I don't know how to say it. Like, like we're not as good, maybe, you know. And it upset me. It would always upset me that they'd say that. I'm like. Yeah, I'm a real comic. I'm on the right. road. 
Like, isn't that what we're all should be shooting for is to go around the world performing and making people happy. And, you know, so I when like you it, said that, like, I thought was very impressed. <laughs> a lot of the good comics got it in New York and the people that are going on the road now, but some of the other comics, I, I, didn't, I was surprised by that when I moved to New York too. Of like all oh, these people, like, that was only my dream. I just wanted to do stand up and then draw yeah. more, more money and do bigger venues. Well, that's just the dream. I just want to stand up until I die. And then I didn't realize that people moved to New York to get acting jobs or writing jobs. I'm like, that's not really right. There's something in my lap with a writing job, then I get, I would take it for sure, but I'm not the guy pursuing it. And then I'll just disappear and become a writer. I don't think I always want to do stand up. So I was sort of surprised, like, oh, they don't love it as much as I do, or they don't think of the road. Their dream is not to go to St. Louis and do an hour phoenix and do an hour in atlanta i'm like that's all i want to do i just want to go to a different yeah. place and then every year or two come up with new stuff and those people come out again that's the dream right my me. dream was to not work <laughs> at barnes and noble so i did it because i don't i just go on on tour and then i then you know i'm thinking about going back though just just for like one one day one big grand finale barnes noble show <laughs> I don't know That'd if you nice. know this, Paul, but I was I got ordained to do Tommy's wedding. Oh, that's wonderful. It was really? so fun. Yeah. If, that's do you, awesome. Are you ordained too by chance? No, not at all. Oh, it's, normally I say that in every comic is like, yeah, me too. I've done my buddies or something like that. If Paul was ordained, I would have had Paul do the wedding. Ah, <laughs> <son of a. laughs> my attitude. I don't think even if I was ordained, maybe you, Tommy, but everybody else, I mean, would you want me? Official. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You'd be like, I don't know why we're here today. <laughs> yeah. You'd be a truth teller. You'd be like, well, this isn't going to last about four <laughs> years, but I'm here and they gave me chicken. So let's do pretty much it. Yeah. Some nihilist host the whole event. Yeah. Do you right. have a uh, feature that you bring on the road with you a lot? Sometimes I bring my buddy Carlos Valencia, who's super funny, who lives down here. You know, Carlos. I've yeah. heard of him, but I don't know him. Valencia, not Mencia. Valencia. Right. Nobody's bringing him. Who's um, super. And um, he's like, he we, we're going to do some gigs together, and we usually do. He's really fun. I met him in Charlotte. He lived in New York with me for a couple of years. Um, then um, Amy Shanker is going with me to the Bahamas. You know, Amy, super funny. Another one I know the name, but I don't know her. Chicago, <laughs> Con New York goes to new york and austin now she's all over she's doing the road a lot she's doing everything so she's really funny carlos valencia amy shanker both great oh, all right excellent yeah. well, cool thank you so much we've taken up a lot of your time but yeah. you're such i hope you had fun chatting with great. us this was awesome we covered it all we did <laughs> paul you're wonderful uh people can look you up find your shows see you on boats or clubs wherever they want yeah, do you I'll want to pitch update. something? I will update the schedule. I promise. <laughs> okay, he'll have his website will be updated when this podcast goes live. So, well, I was it was just because I was doing research on you, and I don't know if you when you when you Google Paul, one of the very first links that comes up is your net worth. What is it? Nineteen million. Oh man, <laughs> dude, you imagine? Yeah. Oh. Tommy I and I not. did this one time too, and we were both like 15 million or something like that. Yeah, they're I, way off. I have 19 million. You have 15 million. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I, I mean, it's obvious. That's <laughs> why we do what we do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on. I, I'm going to, we're going to boot you out of the room. Uh, All right. Here, but you are you wonderful. Say bye, Rob. Bye, Paul. Thanks again, man. It was really awesome seeing you again, man. Thank you. Love you guys. Well, that was Paul Hooper, the part two, long awaited. So I think it was great. I love Paul so much. He's he's fantastic. I uh, I talked to him this week on Instagram because he's running again because he like had COVID, then went into, out of quarantine, and then he was excited. And I go, what kind of running shoes do you use? And he goes, are you going to run? And I go, no, but I'm always thinking about it. I'm always thinking about running. I'm never going to run. That's what I told him. But. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Well, this is it, Rob. This was another episode of A Little Tom Foolery. Uh, I, I want to thank everybody for listening. All of our new listeners, we've been hearing a lot of people at shows that are excited to to be listening to the podcast. So welcome. Uh, and if uh, you know, you can always watch us on YouTube. We like that, and you can see what we look like. Please subscribe, <laughs> share, 
And we have a Patreon and there's so many bonuses and we might be doing more bonuses and stuff like that. So take a look at the Patreon. That's how we keep the lights on. That's how Rob affords the nutcrackers. Like we just, (laughs) we need, you know, anything that can help would would be much appreciated. And if you have any questions, you can just visit a little tomfoolery.com. But this has been another episode of a little tomfoolery. I'm Tommy Ryman. That's Rob Little. Bye fools. Bye. Bye. Fool nation. Fool nation.